All right, everybody, welcome back to another episode of Word with Ty Brownlow. I am your host, Ty Brownlow. And remember, no one is worthless. No story is worthless. Today, ladies and gentlemen, got a very special guest for you. I'll give you a couple of words about my guest. Impact, positive, economics, talent, all the way from Baltimore, Maryland. Put your hands together for unique. What's going on? How you feeling? How you feeling? It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. No problem. No problem. No problem, man. Um, man, look here. I'm glad to have you on the show um, because as you can see, it's, man, some of the words I use to describe you, basically, we're going to talk a lot about, you know, the meaning behind these words. Right, and, right, right. You know, first and foremost, man, let's just get right into it. You know, um, you were featured in a documentary. Uh, I believe Itza Ray produced, or you know, she's part of, or what have you. Yeah, she's one of. Uh, she came on board as one of the executive uh, producers. Okay, all right, and basically, it's called Dark City Beneath the Beat. Correct. All right, and that will, and um, that's on Netflix, or it will be featured on Netflix. Yep, it's currently streaming now on Netflix. Okay, all right, all right. C can you just tell us a little bit, you know, um, of the backstory behind you know the documentary and what you're absolutely mm -hmm. so um the 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 baltimore club culture is is it's been around for you know pushing 40 years myself i am not 40 years old yet however <laughs> um upon well upon about that high school years is when it really started to impact our generation that's when we were allowed to go to the parties, attend different events. You saw a lot more of the you saw a lot of the dances. You heard way more of the music, and you know it, it became really, really addictive. Um, upon I so I was attending Morgan State University. I graduated in Morgan. Um, prior to graduating, I received literally I received an email from a young lady named Tedra Wilson, and she had seen some of my former works of the king of baltimore events mm -hmm. and she just wanted to have a meeting it was um peculiar for me to say the least because no one had ever really reached out to that extent and just said hey i just want to meet you so you know i'm like okay uh sure why not you know so um we had this meeting and um i was a little held back because i was really really strong about this I guess you could say to an extent culture vulture aspect mm -hmm. um you know uh tedra was not originally from baltimore mm -hmm. so her interest while you know it was amazing to me i was still a little reserved um as our relationship blossomed she wiped away all of those different stereotypes ideas of other towners you know, she jumped in head first, fell completely in love with the culture. And if you ask me, she pioneered ways for our music artists, producers, as well as the dancers and DJs to understand how to become financially stable off of this lifestyle. So seeing her do so many things, you know, not only was it inspiring, it was pretty dope because she spent so much time coming back and giving to us and supporting and being a part of the culture from the ground up. So, um, you know, it was about 2011, she pitched this idea and saying, you know, the world needs to see this as a movie. Hmm. And, you know, we were very, very young in the game. She was getting grants and uh, things of that nature to put this project together. And, um, you know, it had its speed bumps, you know, at one point in time, you know, um, all of her equipment got stolen. She had to start from scratch, wow. you know, so her fight to make this happen is just inspirational in itself. Right. Uh, myself, I continue to do my works. Here I hold events, dance competitions, provide outlets. We like to look at it as an open format high school, where it's like, no matter what, you know, what neighborhood you live in, you can show up to our school and learn, Right. you know? Um, majority of the things is always open to the community. However, we specialize in some unique events 
like the King of Baltimore, Queen of Baltimore dance competitions right. that just gravitate to the eye. The public loves them. Mm. So, you know, uh, in the process of doing my works and connecting, along with a plethora of other artists throughout the city, uh, TT decided, you know, to put this together in her special way. Um, the first big, uh, I guess you could say, moment for us was it got accepted by Southwest, uh, South by Southwest Film Festival. But this was right at the peak of Corona coming. So the festival, the festival got shut down literally a week before we could get our debut. Um, but that continued the works and uh, creative color creative, which is Issa Rae's management group, looked into TT, which then proceeded to her being involved with the documentary. And you know, um, ten years later, the project is complete, finalized. It started from one variation to a different, you know, all different types of angles. Right. And, um, you know, it's just nothing but a, a work of art to not only see it come together, but to understand the type of work that was put in it from not just my angle, but TT being a director, Issa being a producer, Mighty Mark and, TT, and uh, uh, TSU Terry, my co-stars, you know, mm. man. And it's, and it's a phenomenal project. Well, man, first and foremost, like, shout out to the whole team. Like, everybody you just named, because you named a whole bunch of people. But <laughs> shout out to them, because, I mean, seriously, and you talk about TT. I mean, she's very instrumental in all of this. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? So, like, she had the vision. And as you said, you know, you had to gain that trust. Absolutely. You know, like, okay, like, yes we have something here that we do and you're not from here but you know we don't really want this to be taken from us and made into something else you know that it really should yep. be and we not benefit from it so the fact that you know as i said before economics, economics. For you, man look found the way to monetize i mean you know help you all monetize your gifts and you yep. know basically man hey look here i got this talent i gotta make some money off of it there it is there it is you know? so let me just ask this question you know look i'm in chicago illinois okay so right. i mean i know how a city can be stereotyped especially when it comes to the media <laughs> and the news or what have you look you, i mean you name it it always feels as if it's being done here. You know what I'm saying? Like, we just have the worst crime rate in the city. I mean, you know, I'm sorry. Pretty much in the country. In the world. Right. <laughs> all the to world, them. you know, all the crimes being done here. You know. But, um, man, Baltimore has a share of notorious... Stereotypes. <laughs> yes. Man, notorious stereotypes, even from the TV shows, like, you know... Um, the corner, the wire, wire. Um, I'm forgetting another show like Rock and stuff like that. You know, yep. even though Rock was so a positive so, so, so. show, you know, but it had its the show. community and everything around. Yeah, yeah, it like, it like everything, man. So, how can like a documentary like this change the uh, view the public has often gotten about Baltimore and what goes on there? In your opinion. Um, I'd like to go a step further. I think it does more than change their view, but it, it kicks the doors of opportunity down. Um, see, one of the major issues with stereotypes is they don't just affect the community. They, f they affect the businesses. They affect the business owners. Mm -hmm. um, and they affect the pioneers who are actually trying to make some changes. Yeah. One thing that we have to understand about the entertainment business as a whole when it regards to the shows and the aspects that we've seen even down to the news mm. bad news sells yeah bad news sells and the world is a seller's market it's a market of movers and shakers and sellers and doers so very much so you know if you post a inspirational speech saying hey uh wake up and thrive at life and pursue happiness you know, social media will probably give you five likes. 
But if you post a video of you and your best friend in a fight throwing fisticuffs, then all of a sudden it's 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 the most viewed aspect in the world. Yes. So that aspect is just one of those fights that our community is always going to have to compete against. We're always going to be throwing fists with that one. Um, as far as the documentary itself, I think that it'll open the eyes of the entire world to understand that some of pressure, matter of fact, the best way to put it is pressure makes diamonds. There you, go. you know, it's, it's one of those things where it's like, if you can sit here and you can correspond mentally with the hardships of growing up in a city such as a Chicago, such as a Baltimore, if you can see that there are individuals like myself, like TT the artist, uh, like yourself in the podcast that are thriving and changing and presenting nothing but growth amongst individuals around them, you know, I think it gets at some point where everyone will take a moment and look in and say, what's going on? There? You know, maybe maybe there is some some diamonds to be found in the rough. And um, one of the, you know, very special things about the documentary is there is so many artists, you know, while the backstories are built around four main characters, mm -hmm. the entire film features nothing but local talent from the makeup artists to the stylists to the dancers to the instructors to the editors of the film to the music uh production cast to the film crew it, it it's just literally one of those that when you look at the piece every notion of it should express to you the artistic level that baltimore is excelling at and it just needs the rest of the world to overlook the stereotypes and take a step in. Take a moment and look in. That's all it takes. There you go. There you go. No, you know what? I think you worded that eloquently. You know, like, man, take a moment and step in. See what, I mean, look, see what it is we have to offer. We are really putting forth, like, talent here. You know? There it is. Like, we're breaking that stereotype that the media or, you know, TV, what have you, may have, you know, confounded about, you know, our beloved city. But we're here to tell you, you know, we're much more than that. You know, Absolutely. So, man. Yes, I feel that. I feel that. Man. Okay. All right. All right. <laughs> You nigga over there putting it down. All right. <laughs> Check it out. But no, Just a little so, bit. Just like, a you know, let's talk about the music scene for a second because, okay. you know, as I said before, I'm here in the Midwest and, you know, man, we got drill music here and it's all, you know, kinds of stuff going on. But like you being out on like the East Coast and Southeast at that, um, you know, like the music scene in Baltimore, like, I mean, man, in my eyes, it's like, you know, fighting for space or like identity in between like the go-go sound in DC. And then you got like trap music down in like, you know, Atlanta in the South or whatever. So, um, you know, talk a little bit about that. Like, you know, fighting for your own sound in between those two, because, you know, like, even though- For us? Yes. So, for us, it gets, a, it, it's, it's, it gets deeper. Mm -hmm. um, again, the entire world is very familiar with the hip hop sound. Right. I like to express that when you think about the elements that make up hip hop, mm -hmm. the elements, the MC, mm -hmm. the B boy, mm -hmm. the DJ, mm -hmm. of course, the graffiti. Mm -hmm. You know, when you look at all of the elements that make up hip hop. Mm -hmm different areas all around emulated that and created their own variation yes they did yes they did when you go uh baltimore club itself was inspired by miami base okay 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 when you look at the miami base even down to the music in chicago that the dancers do the footwork to yeah right you slow okay. it down you know sometimes things is just a matter of, pimp of tempos if you slow that down, you might be sitting there thinking to yourself like, oh, this looks, this sounds like something else that I've heard before. 
Right. You know, right, right, so right. with for everybody in those spaces, I think everyone very much so, as you saw in the original stages of hip hop, mm -hmm. when they went to New York, you had this form of rap. When you went to down south, you had this form. When you went to LA in the Bay Area, you started this. Everywhere they went, everybody started to put their own little sprinkle on what hip hop was. Mm -hmm. So the Baltimore music scene is one of those that I believe is, again, it's overlooked because of the stereotypes and the music scene itself has become more business than authentic to creative. Key point. So because now you're in a, in a notion where instead of it being creative and trying to reach as many people who want to listen to me, Mm -hmm. The labels and the, the the big pieces in play, they're they're looking around and saying, "No, how many followers you got?" <sighs> you know. So when they bring in those elements, yeah. it's a consistent fight because yeah. we not to suggest that we haven't had any breakout artists because you know, Shorty Shorty, he's over in LA making moves now, but he's from Baltimore. He's okay. a platinum artist. Okay. You know, um, we've had different artists get signed from labels who are currently producing tracks, making music. You got Tate Cobain, who's most recently worked with uh, Nicki Minaj. is another soon to be, if not already, platinum situation. Um, it's just that you don't know the names. And you don't know the names because we get the labels. We get the labels as hard to work with, but mm. he's still a good artist, so... We, we might not put enough backing behind him to be the face, but we'll pay him in the office to write our songs. Mm. We'll, we'll, we'll connect with them to produce our, our tracks and collaborate with somebody else so that it seems like it's more New York than Baltimore, et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> you know, not to take a shot at New York, but just, no, no, that's no. just, that's just the wave of the game. Yeah. And, we are constantly, constantly fighting for our own piece and Baltimore Club being a unique music in itself. You know, um, I just think we made some mistakes along the way. Um, currently, shout out to New Jersey, shout out to Philly. They both have their variations of club music. Um, Jersey is making tremendous splashes with their variation of club. Um, but for me, it still goes back to the fact that the first original club track the first sound was started here so regardless of if you name it jersey club baltimore club philly yeah. club uh the next city that want to hop on and florida florida starting to go to florida club and florida drill and at the end of the day it's hip-hop right 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 it's hip-hop yeah, you know yeah so, you know, we appreciate the homage. We'd love to have some more uh, names being said about, you know, where it came from and, you know, uh, just letting the world know that it was originated here. But all in all, the, the music scene will always make cities like us fight for a harder spot. If we were, we don't have these conversations about the LA's of the world, the New York's of the world. Right. And, you know, um, it's just the politics of the business now. Mm. So now that the, the business has become more political than ever, yeah, that's just going to be a fight. We fight until the end of time. Well, you know what, man? You have hit on... I don't know how many key points you hit on. <laughs> you hit on so many because, as you said, now you're taking the creativity out the game. It's more about business. Um, I've had people on here, you know, from TV to radio, you know, and they've all said the same thing. Now it's really about followers, you know. Yep. Um, they will bypass talent because they want the followers, you know. Absolutely. You bring in, you know, versus, hey, I could really put out some quality and really, you know, cultivate this into something, you know, very good. Versus, hey, you know what? No, since you already have this, yeah, you may not be, you know, talented for what I really want, but you Let got me show to show you how to use it. You know, yep. man, here, I'm gonna push this on you anyway. 
you know. So let me show you how to make a bag off of it real quick. Yeah, right, and right. I, I listen to me. I, I don't. I have nothing against you. Nothing against you whatsoever. Um, I just. I think it's it's more on the consumers to understand what we're consuming. So okay, to your point, as a consumer, as a consumer, you know, I have an issue with because now you're tainting, you know, what I love to like listen to and vibe out to or get motivated to. Now I have to like dig and you know go like a little bit either. Um. Retro think, or extremely under. I, I would love to agree, but I have to disagree. Okay. And the reason the reason I disagree is because it's one of those things where it's like once you understand something mm -hmm. is something, then what are you fighting? Mm -hmm. So, for example, we understand that the industry is in the business of making money. True. So, before if. And, and myself, I listen to everything. Yeah. I, it's, it, I, it's nothing I probably wouldn't find interesting in some way, shape, or form. You will catch me listening to 80s, 90s rap, and I will sit here and listen to the newest, youngest guys out as well. Mm -hmm. And understanding that, what do I do? I take a step back and I say, okay, cool. Today, I know... I cannot listen to shoot 'em up, bang bang, all day long. It's not gonna put me. So I subconsciously take myself out of the desire of playing it. Okay. And then I go find the individuals that I know provide me with the substance I'm looking for. You know, it's very. It, it kind of reminds me of you get on social media in a small town or even a big city, and it's always somebody saying, "Oh, it's nothing to do." <laughs> really? <laughs> There's a billion people in the world and you're telling me it's nothing to do? There's something. It's something to do. Yeah. Find what sparks your interest. So, you know, fighting the machine is not our interest. Mm -hmm. it, trying to preach to the multi-millionaires who invest in the music that, oh, you should be investing in this type of artist because this is what people want. No. They literally have researchers and people who do the um the diagnostics to find yeah. out who's listening to what where they're listening to the age range all of the above mm -hmm. so since they got all that statistics mm -hmm. they're gonna look at you and say sir you like fendi i'm you <laughs> walked in the go sheet right <laughs> you know i apologize our price is too high you want the thrift store down the street man you know, so for me, um, you know, at one point I was really into, and I think what I, I think the problem is, is the labels. What happens is everything gets labeled in a category. So right now, even myself, if I was to drop a Baltimore Club music song, mm -hmm. it would more than likely get labeled a dance music song instead of a hip hop song. Mm -hmm. Right now, we are in the era of rappers. We're not getting too much hip hop. We're getting rappers. Right. There is not a label that says rappers <laughs> on the top fortune on the on the charts. It's just gonna label them hip hop. Hip hop. That's the what same means. way you know you got um um uh, the, the different. I would like to say you know alternative artists who come in. Yeah, they yeah. make a song that sounds like our sound, and immediately they get labeled hip hop. Right. But then, as soon as they go and make a song where they're singing or harmonizing, then it gets labeled pop. Yeah, pop. I'll turn it. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. When we do it, it's all hip hop. They get all labeled hip hop, rap. They don't care. Yeah, and they don't care to decipher between the labels. Now you know what you just look here. Now, Neek. <laughs> yes, come on now. Again, we fight. In, it's so. a different fight. It's a different man, fight, man. Yeah, man. Look, but I mean, that's real. Yeah. Let's not act like it's not real. I mean, you know, especially hey, you know, certain artists of a certain complexion, yeah. I mean, no names, you know. But no, like you know, they will pigeonhole you into that category, and no matter what, immediately. 
Man, I look. think we, we we just saw with the uh, with the young boy. What's his name? Uh, Lord Nas X. Mm. Young boy, Lord Nas X. Oh you yes, know? yes, yes. Whether yes. you whether you like him, love him, disagree with him, mm-hmm. whatever the case may be, you know, I think his situation alone opened opened eyes to it. There's nothing about that song that wasn't country. That was no. a country song. But because he was dominating the charts and doing so much streaming and breaking records and things of that nature, they didn't want it to be categorized in that category. Because so then they would have to identify with a black man charting their charts. Come on now. So that was a that was a tough situation. And they found a way to, I think they, once again, that's another one that they either labeled it hip hop or they put it in the pop category. But had they respectfully gave that man his credit of making a country song, the the millions that he may have saw should have been multi millions. Yeah, yeah, because now you know it just he would have been revolutionizing the culture. Right there, you go. They can come revolutionize our culture all they want. Mm. As soon as we step into theirs, it's a problem. Whoop. Stop that! Stop that! Me go over here telling these truths, people. Y'all better we can get- only do. Long as you know, we can only do hip hop, rap, and gospel. That's it. <laughs> That's the only reason why they can let Kanye go over there to gospel music. They said, "Look, all right, you, we know you make a lot of music. All your albums, even the one that you were singing on it, that's not that's not pop. We're gonna put that right back in the hip hop category." <laughs> and that's interesting because it's not a hip hop song; it's a pop song. It, but, if you can find something more eight hundred eight and heartbreaks that was hip hop, show me. <laughs> wow, you know, and I love the album. I do. Oh no, I love it. I love it. But it, I mean, it we're definitely talking about deserves. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 You know, so mm-hmm. it's just the stranglehold and us being at the bottom tier of that totem pole, being a small city that has nothing but uh, negative images written all over it. Right. You know, I've had many individuals in the industry explain to me when I gave them my phone number. They're like, "You might want to change your number." Like, why? That area code. Don't nobody want to do business with them. Wow, it's little things like that. I got friends who literally, when they get their new cell phone numbers, they register their phone number from a total different state, oh. just because they don't want the stereotype of Baltimore following behind them. Mm. That's what it it's is. It's a game, man. It's a game. Woo! It's a game, ladies and gentlemen. It's <laughs> a game. And you know what? That's deep. That's deep. You know, like that's level. You know, and that speaks to like the PTSD almost in a sense that, you know, psychologically you get coming from, you know, this because you're almost buying in to the narrative, which you shouldn't, you know, like if you're trying to like establish and change the culture and change the narrative, then yeah, I'm gonna call you from, you know, my area code and we're gonna have a conversation and it's I mean, honestly, it shouldn't be about my area code and where I'm from. It's really right. being about me being an asset to you, not a liability or what have you, but an asset and, you know, and nothing behind the scenes where I'm like ghost writing or I'm ghost producing or I'm doing all these other things instead of like, you know, having my talent speak for itself. In the right, right, right. So. <sighs> That's the game we play. That's Man. the game we have. Whoa. So now let me ask, um, you know, like your role in the music scene in Baltimore, like how did that get started and who are some of your influences, man? So um, it's weird because mine was more passion driven than anything. Um, I was about 14, 15 when I first kind of started hearing a lot of the club music culture. Um, and every Sunday they used to hold an event at Hammerjacks called Super Sundays. So me and um, a friends of mine, we would attend those events. And the very first time, you know, I came from, I was just a no nonsense type of guy growing up. And we, we walk in, we're walking to the club rather and a line is wrapped around the building, wrapped around the building. I mean, Driving down people, the building is rap, rap, rap again. I'm telling my friends, like, bro, we should call this one tonight. Have a good one. You know, this is not happening. 
they like, no, nah, we got to be here. Da, 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 da. I said, okay, y'all going to follow me. Right. So I walk up to the security guard. I, sl- I, I pulled the old school move, put the 20 in my hand, <laughs> shook his hand. Hey, bro, I ain't seen you in a long time. <laughs> he looked at me. He like, they with you. So they pat us down. Um, due to the violence, one of the things that they were big on back then was you had to take the shoes off, turn them upside down, and knock them so that they knew you didn't have any weapons or anything in your shoes. Word. For real, for real. I've always been into shoes. Wow. I have a huge shoe collection. All right. 14 or not, I'm not taking my shoes off. <laughs> you lost me at the idea of putting my socks on the concrete and standing here for you. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. Right. Everything was smooth. Um, at that point in time, I had no clue what was going on, but our, she, uh, may she rest in peace, uh, DJ K Swift. She was pulling up. She was on the side with security. She was having the ball laughing at me. Um, you know, I've all, I'm, I'm short in stature. I've always been short. So they like, you know, who this little guy, who you think he is? <laughs> um, but she invited me to come along and with her. She told security, he's good. He with me. Um, so that's literally how the relationship was built. I went on to become a promoter for her. Right. And in that process, while other people were enjoying the dance and the, the the club scene and everything else mm-hmm. you know once i found out who i was with i was a student i was understanding everything that i was watching i'm looking at her like how you got how you gonna be in three places at one time you got three parties tonight oh this is how that works so oh, this is how we get this is how we get multiple checks mm-hmm. you know Everybody else partying. I'm, I'm 14, but I want to know about this money. <laughs> you know? So, um, once again, once I, the vision just followed me. I got to Morgan where I was a student as, at, at the School of Business. Mm-hmm. And some of our local legends were attending a lot of the different events, parties that I was going to at the Paradox Nightclub. Wow. Then I ran into Big L, uh, Reggie Ridge. I met Jay Claxton there, um, of course, K Swift, Scotty B. But, you know, the first person to kind of support the initiative with me being just an unknown college kid was a local promoter by the name of Buck Jones. Um, He had the relationships with everybody else. So having him on board was like, if he respects it, eventually everybody else will. Mm, okay. You know, and he was one of the first people who kind of gave me the the go ahead. Shortly after, I started to formulate these ideas to work hand in hand with Swift. She passed away. Mm. Um. So with that loss yeah. came looking at it from a different angle. So with the event, we began to pioneer the entire new sound for the culture um you literally went from dancing to club music because you loved it to making performing getting paid for getting booked to do shows you know we were looking at every angle to take these kids who were not looked at as honor roll students or expected to be college graduates right and figuring out how they would make a living at some point in their life Mm, okay and you know the management portion just it comes with business you know a local artist starts to hear or they see that you've been doing business 10 15 years successfully and they just come whispering in your ear hey bro i need a manager you like i'm not really into that but (laughs) i got you right i can point you in the right directions i can you know, and from there we started building the studios and working with different production companies and even now having our own full on production company because we started having to basically make music videos for everything. Right. Um, you know, so I really just got started as just a young punk dreamer, man. <laughs> just a young kid who just thought he knew just a tough guy who thought he knew what he was doing. And you just kept doing it. <laughs> you didn't want to take off his shoes. <laughs> nope. Was not happening. <laughs> <laughs> I like, nah, man. I ain't doing that. 
But it just wasn't. <laughs> man, no, but you know what? That's such a fabulous story. And, you know, as you said, rest in peace, K Swift. You know, man, like, took you under her wing. Was like, man, you know what? Come on. Look, I'm going to show you this, that, what have you, you know, and a uh, whole new world. Show you, man, showed you a whole new world. And as you said, you know, being successful off the business having people yep. come to you hey you know i need a manager i need this i need that well i'm not really a manager but you know what we can figure it out <laughs> we can figure it out i can, can help definitely you figure out. it out I can do something for you i know some people let me yeah, tell it you, is. you let's know. use this network <laughs> right let's use this network and you know what at the end of the day that's what it is man that's what it's all about it's about network and you know yep. building like concrete relationships of those networks so there it is man um so let's like shift gears a little bit let's talk about your program because you have a program called be more to dance all right Correct. so let's talk about that what's all that about now i know that was featured um in the documentary, documentary. but let's talk a little bit more about it like you know tell people out there like hey they have no clue what is be more so to dance? Be More Than Dance is a open network mm -hmm. that teaches talent to help them learn to monetize. That's the key part. Mm. Mm. We, we start off, so we currently have a team of over 10 DJs, uh, about 10 different MCs, 10 different producers, plethora of dances <laughs> right we utilize these networking events they're like socials for us it wasn't let's just have a program for kids it was let's provide something for everybody mm. the everybody portion is so important because so often with programming there's not enough space there's not enough resources to take in everybody right. whereas us we had the handicap of not having a facility so since we didn't have a facility the smartest option was let's use these wrecks let's use these parks let's use all these large areas and you can put as many people in one place as possible without being without it being a problem mm. then let's split them up Let's put the dancers with the dancers. Let's put the DJs with the DJs. The, the guys who want to make music, let's put them over there. The guys who believe they're vocalists or MCs, let's put them over there. And they start to feel the, the, the bonds, the relationships. They start to learn how to go from amateurs to professional performers. There it is. And the goal, while we continue to harvest those talents is they slowly but surely start to learn all the tools from something as simple as the business card mm -hmm. to having a website, learning how to build a portfolio, learning how to build a dance resume or a DJ resume that shows your most important gigs. Um, and then because we're so invested into the music, they become the talent. So, so often people like to reach out to us because they're like, oh, we want to see your dance group. And I'm just like, oh, that was cute. <laughs> you know, it's like, eh, you know, I'm a whole CEO of a major brand here. And you want to keep calling me a dance group and I'll accept it. Um, yeah. We manage dance groups. Right. But we're performing artists. Mm. We have mm. 45 minutes to one hour sets. Mm hmm. There's a DJ behind me. I mic and freestyle my entire event. The dancers perform. Mm -hmm. Even the DJs can dance. Everybody can get in. So when I look at it, you book us, they evolve their talent at the smaller mm -hmm. shindigs. Mm -hmm. When these events and situations come about, now they're being utilized and learning to monetize at a young age and getting paid for it. 
So the only thing we did was harvest all of it and make it full circle. Where at worst case scenario, you get the opportunities by being booked with us. Mm. And then we take those bookings and teach you how to get your own. Whether that be you deciding to be an instructor and teach programs, mm -hmm. or whether that is opening up for performances such as Money Bag Yo, Rick Ross, uh, Jack Keys, uh, Chad Focus, TT the Artist. Uh, I mean, we've tapped into all of it. It's literally just that element where the first thing that people think when they see dancers is dance group. No. They don't really see the full enhanced talent enrichment and that 24 hour, seven day a week process that goes into turning those talented individuals into entrepreneurs. And so look, some of the words that I use people, impact, economics, positive, talent man if all man look if all four of those words were just not utilized <laughs> everything that we've been talking about i don't know what else to tell you okay seriously yeah. i don't know what else to tell you um if people want to get in contact with you how can people get in contact with you on social media or the internet or what happens social media be more than dance on all social media from Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. What's the new one, the kid? TikTok. Yeah. <laughs> TikToks. You might even find the old MySpace out there. Oh, it's wow. Always no, been, <laughs> it's always been Be More Than Dance. You can also find us at Be More Than Dance .com. Okay. Um, There, you know, uh, we take donations because we're actually looking to have a warehouse by the end of the year. Okay. Our goal is to build out the program mm -hmm. uh, expeditiously, as T.I. would say. Expeditiously. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, as well as uh, just the, the support of merchandising and items of that nature. All of that is just going towards helping us provide this programming. Um, email, be more than dance at iCloud.com. Okay. That's probably the best way to directly reach me. Mm -hmm. I'm available 24 hours, seven days a week, even when I'm asleep. I figure it out. Uh, and uh, the YouTube, they love the YouTube channel. There you have, I want to say it's roughly about a good eight to 10 years of history on the YouTube channels alone. So, you know, we, it's been it's been a machine for some time now. <laughs> okay, content, content. You can check us yes. off loud. All right. Okay, that's what's up. So look, man, like this brings us to the last question of the show. Uh, I can't really believe the time has gone past how it has, <laughs> but um, but man, I have to ask, this is the um, question my show is known for. So unique, what is the one word that best describes you and why? Cool. It's crazy because I've been thinking about this. <laughs> And every time I settled on a word, you I came back that. to something else. Yeah, okay, okay. I would have to, I, right now my heart is stuck on innovative. Okay, all right, why? What we created was not supposed to be. Mm. When I started on this journey, my literal goal was to hold one event. <laughs> <As a, laughs> I laugh because uh, you know we went from literally one event to almost a hundred a year. <laughs> Innovative because while yes, I have a college degree. Mm -hmm. I'm very well spoken. Mm -hmm. um, I had the advantage and disadvantages of baltimore i never gave up and i continue to find new interesting ways to do the things that i love to do mm. Mm. this by far is not work for me this is a life's mission of doing what i love to do and while we're captivating audiences all around the world by the strengths of a dark city beneath the beat on netflix mm -hmm. 
we continue to innovate ideas, concepts, and ultimately new ways to help the next generation make a successful living. Mm. And that probably is the most dynamic part of what I do mm. and why I have to rock with innovators because the formula has always been consistent and consistent failure for us. It's always been go to school, graduate, mm. get a job. Mm -hmm. But then you look up and you say, I'm in debt. I'm miserable. I hate what I do. Right. Right. For me, I was able to innovate a way for an entire generation to make a living doing absolutely the things that they love. And there it is. There it is. Like, man. So, impact. Positive. <laughs> talent. Yes, sir. These are the words that I use. This is what it's been. I mean, you know, you're like providing, and I think innovative is a hell of a word, you know, because look, you're taking a mindset, as you said before, you know, hey, man, go to school, graduate high school, go to college, get a degree, but then, okay, then, then you know, just go get a job. But as you said, you know, there's even levels to that. So you got people, man, in debt, working a the job they hate, now, you know, life is this, that, and the other, whereas, no, if this is what, man, if this is what you want to do, let me show you how to get paid. Yep. And you can go take your talents elsewhere, and you don't even have to go that route. And you're happy at the end of the day. And if going back to school is something that you want to do later on down the road, do it. By all means, do so. You know, yep. I mean... And let's not, you know, sit up here and act like we're just against school. Like, we're not against it. Not at all. Not but, at all. you know, like, I talk about... Morgan, Morgan on State that. made me. Yeah. Yeah. Morgan State made me, you know. Um, yeah. If it wasn't for my college experience, I wouldn't be who I am today. It sure. was just an acceptance of the reality that in my city, the demographic is known to not be interested in it. And there you so, go. therefore... I found no interest in preaching a dead message. It was a message that was impactful, hopeful, economical. You know, it was that message that they needed to hear. You know, even in my own experience throughout school, I saw it. They would come in, they would give their lectures, and the guys who had no interest in school, it went in one ear and out the other. That does not mean that the world should lose hope on them. No. It just means that they have to find where their fit is. And sometimes we forget that. Sometimes we forget that, you know, while we've allowed ourselves to accept what the traditional route is, everybody is a tradition. Everybody. Mm, there it is. Man, look here. Everybody is not traditional, ladies and gentlemen. Look, I didn't say it. Unique just told y'all, okay? <laughs> That's what it is. Man, look here, brother. I really, really appreciate you coming up, man, coming on the platform, spending time with us, man, dropping this knowledge. You know what I'm saying? It was an absolute pleasure to be here. Man, for real, for real. Man, ladies and gentlemen, this has been World with Ty Brownlow. I've been your host, Ty Brownlow. Remember, no one is worthless. No story is worthless. You can follow me on all social media platforms at World with Ty Brownlow. Or you can go to my website, tybrownlow.com, get this wonderful interview, plus other great interviews. Man, brother unique. Man, we out. Peace.